Good morning. So we are here today to talk about vaccinations and cattle care. So um, we're here in my garage again, and Dr. <laughs> Kaylee Fitzmorris is here to teach us about vaccinations. And we're really going to have a lot of conversation. Um, and if you have questions, please pose them for us so that we can talk about them. But um, we do have a fun activity as well that you can do if you want to. However, this is what my hands look like after doing the activity. So <laughs> you might want to wear gloves. <laughs> and protect your countertop. Um, so vaccinations in cattle, um, obviously that's one of the big times that we get to see you. Um, it's calving season here in the Flint Hills. And so with calving, just like with childbirth in humans, um, we have vaccinations that we need to take care of to maintain our herd and make sure that they're well and they're kept safe. So, I mean, at birth, we don't get vaccinations, but shortly thereafter, they get their first round. How does that kind of work cycle-wise? So usually, just like in children, we give the first vaccination to babies when they're about two months old at branding time. Um, so they get ear tags if they already haven't had it. Um, they get a brand, possibly, if you're ranch brands, which shows like where they belong to. Um, and then they also get vaccines. So um, maternal antibodies are what like a mom produces to keep the calf from getting sick the first couple months. Same as people, um, the colostrum that moms produce um, makes the baby safe for the first couple months. But as that starts to go get it down, we have to give them something to protect them. So that's what vaccines are. It's to protect the babies um, from diseases that they could possibly get. So when we talk about um, maternal um, taking care antibodies, those, for that to work, the parents had to have had the vaccinations, right? Right. Or Actually, the most. Okay. So, so, most cows are vaccinated once, twice a year, um, depending on what vaccine we're talking about. And the whole reason they're vaccinated is to keep them safe and to boost the colostrum um, so that the baby calves get that in the first couple months. Here's our baby calf right here <laughs> that... Um, she we get vaccinated. Yeah, we've already gotten two vaccines. So one at birth um, and then one uh, two months later. So um, I know what we vaccinate our kids for for the most part. Um, I love my doctor and trust my doctor. Um, so when he tells me that we need to do things, I ask my questions and trust that we need to do it. So I know the um, have to schedule and watch it and make sure that they're getting all of those. Um, and the same thing kind of happens with our cattle as well. I mean, we know what they're getting. Right. Um, it's a little bit different in people, I guess, on the um, consumer end because um, the rancher gets to choose what right. vaccination they're giving their cattle. Yes. Um, but they're not going to give things like different regions have different vaccines they're going to give. They're not oh. going to give unnecessary vaccines if it's not a disease that they have in their area. Okay, so what can you give us an example of some things that we actually vaccinate for here? Sure, so we vaccinate calves for black leg, which is in the soil, um, or tetanus, um, which is also can be soil born, and they can get a, a wound just like people when we have to booster tetanus. Um, so we vaccinate for it and then we booster them again as they get older. Okay, and so the calves, when we get that, and she did talk about um, we also brand our cattle, obviously, we don't brand our children. No. Um, but our Children, we can, um, obviously we can identify them. They look like us. Cattle to um, the, a person, to a human, cattle for the most part look a lot like each other. I mean, yes. the calves. Yep. But moms know which ones are theirs. But for the cat, for most part, it's for us to know who, who belongs to who. So um, we're branding those. And we're going to do a whole session about branding and tagging. Um, every ranch does it differently. Um, but there's a pretty much a common theme right. about how we do that. Um, and in with that, we'll also do stuff about fences and things that mm -hmm. why we <laughs> have those. And it's all about making sure that everyone's safe and yep. so taken care of. But um, so the vaccination um, part is really cool. So when we do this in the classroom, we actually do this with the sixth grade and we use syringes and it is a totally awesome experiment. Now, um, we're social distancing, which is why this is challenging with a lot of things, and, and you're not going to be able to run out and buy syringes, I hope. 
<laughs> and not probably worth a trip to the store to no, get them. Not an essential item. So we have been um, trying, toying around with some ways that we could do this experiment with um, you all at home. So what are we going to do? So can you talk about the shots and what we're talking about? Sure. Um, so we're doing this. Different vaccines get given in different ways. Just like with children, sometimes the vaccine gives you give it by mouth um, or under the skin or in the muscle. Um, same with cattle. Uh, you can give it up the nose or by mouth or under the skin or in the muscle. So each vaccine uh, has a different label and you have to follow the label directions. So we're going to talk about giving an injection sub Q, which means under the skin or in the muscle. So um, today we are going to use oranges because uh, we can't get bananas, but it works better with bananas, but our store was out right now. And you could do bananas or apples, or I mean not apples, bananas apples or oranges. I Anything think with like a thick skin. That has a thick skin. I can't think of anything else that has really a thick, oh, I guess any other citrus. Yes. Would work. Anything with a thick skin would be A fine. thick skin, yeah. yeah. Not a lime, but a lemon would work probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so I did one earlier, which is why my hands are blue, because we were trying to figure this out, but, um, the recommendation I would say is, so what we've got here is, I just got regular old food coloring. Um, I got two different colors. Yep. Um, and then this is just a syringe that came, I think this one says Walgreens on it. So obviously I got it with a prescription at some point. Um, it's gone through the dishwasher. Um, but they come with Tylenol or a bunch of little kids medicines yep. also. So you could do any of that. So um, I won't make you dye your hands. So. I am going to find my injection site, and this actually goes through pretty easily. I have more of this, so I'm going to go all the way through. So, so you're going to do in the muscle first? I'm going to do in the muscle so first. So that's straight in. And so we have a tougher orange this time. So, so we're do. injecting straight in so that we can demonstrate um, an in the muscle shot. And then we're going to do a sub-Q shot, which means under the skin. So we're going to try to just go under the skin of the orange and give a different color, and then we're gonna peel the orange so you can see the two different types of injections. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was awesome. Okay, so what I was trying to do was just, I am gonna have a green, is it on my face? Yeah, it is. This is great. So I'm gonna go just at an angle, like underneath the skin, and you can kind of feel the difference between the flesh of the orange and the skin, and inject that. You probably won't be able to tell, but I'm just spinning around so you can see that it's in there. Um, it's good that you all can watch this, and we can't retape this because it will be inexplicable why I have green on <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> This is forever, which makes it even better. Yes. Okay, so now we're gonna peel the orange, and so we can see the two different um, kind of okay. injections, both under the skin, which was the green one that Jamie got all over her face, mm -hmm. and the purple one, which was in the muscle. So we'll see if I know what I'm doing, which I wouldn't put a whole lot of faith in. <laughs> so there's the that one. So you can see a little bit right around the injection site, mm -hmm. which is probably, um, especially with food coloring, is truly not not possible to not do that right um and then here i didn't get enough dye on it but you can see like where it pierced through the skin it's just right under the skin it's just right under the skin so you can see it on the skin side and it is there it just isn't um it i sprayed it all over my face instead of onto the right. second orange but if you actually peel into this orange you can see inside the orange in the middle is this purple um dye is coming through so it did pierce the skin all the way through and go into the orange the flesh of the orange and you can see it's actually really cool it oh, hit yeah. in a really good spot that it actually went into one of the slices you can't really tell that and since so it's food something. color you can eat it yeah it's edible um but like i said you might want to protect yourself because crazy things happen and i am um somewhat of an adult and look at the mess I just made. So it'll be so fun with your kids. But um, it is a really fun project. It's something that you could actually do outside, um, but just teaching all these different things. And there's actually um, 
how we do these injections and you would do the same thing at a doctor's office and most of those um, shots that you're gonna get in the doctor's office are gonna be in the muscle. Yep. Um, I mean they make you hold your legs down and they put them directly into your thigh um, into your muscle. So um, and then so would that be the difference between muscle and fat? Don't they give so much tissue like in you know? I don't do people, I'm not sure. But. <laughs> so um, next time we have the medical doctor here. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get out here. It was nice that you brought your calf with it. You Thank you too. Help us with this demonstration. But um, vaccinations being a really big hot topic right now, waiting for the vaccination for the coronavirus. Um, it seems like a very fitting subject for us to talk about, and yeah. the importance of vaccinations are also important. If you have any questions about what we vaccinate for and why, um, please let us know. Um, the, another thing, I guess, that since we are visiting about injections, will probably be about antibiotics as well. Sure. Um, so when we get antibiotics as humans, for the most part, we're taking them orally. Right. So would that be the same thing for So we cattle? do have some antibiotics that go orally in cattle, but not very many. Most of them are injectable, um, and it's difficult for cattle to take antibiotics by mouth. And because they have the four stomachs, um, it messes with the antibiotic. So they ferment the antibiotic instead of uh, us with just the one stomach where we can just pass it through and absorb it that way. So um, cattle, most of the antibiotics are injectable, but no antibiotics are given unless they're sick. Um, we don't just randomly go out and give cattle antibiotics. One, it's expensive, and two, um, we won't want to eat that meat. Um, They're very expensive. And um, But cattle, um, I think it's very important to um, mention that they do go through a withdrawal period if they are sick. Right. Um, frankly, um, cattle is one of the only animals that is um, actually eaten that is allowed antibiotics to go into the food chain. Chickens aren't allowed. Are pigs allowed? No. Um, some, some, some. Some are antibiotic free. Um, but so antibiotics, no food actually has antibiotics in it. Right. Um, so a cattle, um, the withdrawal period. So like for here, we mark them with like a big X or if they're actually very sick, we bring them into the barn and keep them completely separated or isolated from other cattle. It doesn't happen very often that we would have something like that happen. Um, I mean, the things that we see are typically like in calves, like in babies, and they have diarrhea. Right. Um, which is a challenge um, for right. us because it's very, very um, contagious. Yes. Um, so we do try to isolate them for those sorts of things, but um, each with, antibiotic is a withdrawal period. And so we're so making like sure that each they're one away. you have to keep out of market until that withdrawal period is over, and that means it's gone from the meat, it's gone from the milk, it's gone from tissue, um, and then it's safe for consumption. Right. Um, and since we are talking about that, we do, I do have a picture of our dairy cow here too, because we weren't talking about dairy today. But um, since we are talking about antibiotics, I thought it would be good to mention. Um, antibiotics are something, they would do the same thing that would happen. Um, they would go through withdrawal periods. And dairy is um, a huge deal. Obviously, they're collecting milk every single day. So they know exactly when that withdrawal period ends. They know exactly... Um, they're watching them very closely so that they can start using the, that milk again. Um, but that milk is tested on that truck before it even leaves the dairy. And if it tests positive for antibiotics, they have to dump the entire load before they even leave. And the farmers out that money. Right. So it's a huge deal. Um, antibiotics, um, it's so watched over yeah. they're just there's no a hot topic. it is a hot topic so it's not something that you should ever concern yourself with that there's antibiotics in your food because on our end on the rancher dairy farmer side is we are taking such very very good care because we don't want something like that to happen exactly um that antibiotics would get into the food system so um, you don't have to worry about that. I actually have gotten two texts randomly from different people this week asking about antibiotics and food. Great. I think people are spending a whole lot of time on the internet researching things or listening to health gurus or right. what have you. And when I say health guru, I say it like this. Um, so ask a farmer or a rancher. We're here to answer your questions. Um, when we have questions, we go to the experts. Um, and so we want you to know that we are utilizing all of the people that we have in our world to bring you the safest, most nutritious food that there is. So we will see you soon and we will 
you know, we'll get some cow pictures and things like that on our Facebook page for you guys to download and color also. So um, make sure to subscribe and we'll see you again soon.